China is trying to counter the impact of Western countries reviewing and reducing their exposure to the world's second largest economy. Speaking at the first ever China International Supply Chain Expo, Premier Li Cheng said that China opposes what he called decoupling. The event is Beijing's latest bid to attract foreign investment, which has fallen to historic lows recently. Over the past year, the United States and the European Union have been reducing their dependence on Chinese suppliers and cutting off Chinese firms from sectors deemed sensitive. Let's have a listen to what the Chinese Premier Li Xiang had to say. We are willing to work with all countries to build a closer industrial chain and supply chain partnership. We will deepen international cooperation with practical actions. For more, let's bring in Guido Cozzi, a professor of macroeconomics at St. Gallen University in Switzerland. Welcome to DW, Guido. So Li Xiang says China wants closer supply chain ties with all countries. Against the backdrop of the Chinese economy and how it's doing, why does he say that now? Well, certainly the government is trying to revive uh, economic growth in China, which is still going on, uh, but still... Uh, not enough, be, certainly below capacity. One thing for the previous COVID problems, but also for the property crisis, which badly hit domestic demand and spread insecurity. So now they're trying to stimulate it. At the moment, uh, their only advantage is an extremely low inflation, which actually is on the verge of deflation with a minus 0.2% uh, um, uh, year on year. Uh, and also and also weak growth. However, uh, you know, so there is room for maneuver for expansionary policies, but they need to mm. increase uh, demand. Since they're not, they're not, uh, dem domestic demand is not moving, they try to activate foreign demand. Yeah, so Chinese uh, economy has been producing uh, somber data lately. How much of that can be attributed to Western countries rethinking their China ties? Well, certainly you mentioned the FDI drop, and clearly the foreign direct investment drop is is a lot due on our um, attempt to friend shoring rather than you know offshoring. So uh, because we know these geopolitical problems, and China uh, has several of these also because of its ambiguous position with Russia. Uh, so um, now uh, foreign firms, especially from the West, are wondering: mm. Is it really worthwhile to invest in China? Uh, and to develop our firms there? Or shall we think of, of reshoring from China, maybe moving elsewhere to uh, countries like India, which are more, you know, uh, friendly to the West? Uh, China wants more foreign direct investment. At the same time, when Li Xiang says that China opposes protectionism, what are we to make of that? This, this is true to one extent. On the other sense, uh, there are soft forms of protectionism. Take, for example, the opposite uh, systems in Europe and in China. Okay, in Europe we, in Europe, we tend to believe in the single market without state interference as much as possible. In China, they heavily subsidize their firms. So the, this is a clash of system. Uh, and we can say that protectionism, in a way, is entrenched in their system. So Europe has to close an eye on China's practices of subsidizing their firms, uh, also in the in, in the electrovoltaic, for example, or in the electric car industries. Mm. And, and this is, uh, and, and we can close the eye only if we can count that they will not support Russia, for example, which is waging war at our doors. Now, Guido, uh, Beijing is holding the first international supply chain expo. Uh, what are we to make of that? Is that an indication of how concerned the country's leadership is about its economic ties with the West? Yes, I mean, they have to, they have to reinforce these ties. I mean, we have uh, uh, seen, you know, under the Trump administration, a trade war with the United States. Then we have seen Europe... Uh, 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 since at least 10 years that is, uh, you know, struggling uh, to uh, to um, keep ties uh, uh, fine despite two completely different systems clashing. Uh, so they they now realize that it is important uh, to 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 oil this mechanism. Uh, and uh, mm. it, 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 we have seen that in several aspects, also including Xi Jinping's meeting with Joe Biden. Uh, and so uh, it is it is a moment in which China has to decide to reopen to the yeah. West and, and reassure 
the West. Uh, let's talk about that a, that a little bit, about that, that meeting. Uh, U.S. President uh, Biden and China's state and party leader Xi Jinping got together in San Francisco uh, a short while ago. The meeting has widely been viewed as a sign of thawing relations. Now, has this yielded any specific results when it comes to economic ties? As of now, no. It was, uh, but anyway, symbolically, it is useful. It is also true that both presidents have their own uh, domestic constraints, including Biden, who uh, shall not show too friendly to to China because of uh, you know the domestic uh, uh, electoral concerns. Uh, however, uh, it it was important. You know, it was it was uh, uh, the first uh, since uh, 2017. The first meeting at that level. So it is good that post COVID, I mean, COVID has, has kind of isolated uh, China massively. Now, now Xi Jinping is trying to travel, to go around, and to convince uh, the rest of the world, as he was doing before becoming president, that China is not dangerous, uh, that it could be useful for everyone, and that there is enough room in the world for at least two superpowers. And of course, Premier Li Qiang uh, uh, just said uh, at this supply chain expo that uh, China wants to deepen international cooperation with practical actions. Now, against that backdrop, China recently announced that it would allow visa-free entry for citizens of five European countries, including Germany and Malaysia. What impact do you expect this move could have on the Chinese economy? I think it will have a good uh, a good uh, impact. Uh, by the way, Li, Li Chang obviously is pro market is uh, is much more open than his predecessor. So I think he's, he's sincere when he's doing that. And also the ties with Europe are extremely important because while the United States is the natural competitor of China, Europe is the mediator. So I think it is critical for China to target Europe to try to to improve its relationships with Europe as much as possible, because this will have a leverage effect on all the Western countries. Mm. And the fact that China did this unilaterally without getting anything uh, in return immediately, uh, what does that tell us? Well, they, the, the Chinese elite uh, uh, reason long term. So they give these new slogans, they give some symbol, they, they perform some symbolic acts, but then they they are consistent. Uh, being less uh, concerned with electoral cycles, in a way, gives them at least this advantage. So yeah, they, they tend to tend to move slowly but consistently, which is their force. And of course, also in a coordinated way, because they, Beijing is able to, to maneuver this large, huge country uh, uh, pretty, pretty fast when it wants. Guido Cozzi, economist at St. Gallen University in Switzerland. Guido, thank you for your time. You're welcome. A major risk to China's housing sector and its economy as a whole has been the cash-strapped property developer Country Garden. And anxiety about its troubles stretch beyond China's borders. Just take Malaysia, where concern is growing that Country Garden will abandon a major unfinished building project. DW's Georg Mattes reports. Is this a green futuristic metropolis? or a ghost town literally built on sand. Forest City is located in Johor, a state in southern Malaysia, but so far, it's a city without people. The huge $100 billion residential project was built entirely on an artificial island, just a stone's throw away from the expensive real estate market of neighboring Singapore. It aims to house 700,000 people by 2035. There's a three cluster in here. Totally there's a four cluster. Huh. Okay, three cluster in here, and there are main cluster in the other side. Okay. This Malaysian pensioner, who wants to be referred to as Mr. Lim, is one of its few residents. He bought two units from Chinese investors. After the public learned that the private Chinese developer behind Forest City, Country Garden, had run into financial difficulties, many first-time buyers wanted to sell. So far, the majority of the 28,000 apartments that have been completed in Forest City have been sold, but hardly any of the owners have moved in. Mr. Lim is confident that this will change with the expansion of the city. It's 60% uh, owned by the, uh, the country garden, 40% actually, I mean, that the owned by the Johor, I mean, that the local government, right, including the Sultan. It's not totally owned by country garden, so 
in that sense, I mean that they feel that this one is still quite have potential. So that's why they still keep well maintained. But the key was well maintained. Wherever you go in Forest City, you will come across dozens of gardeners. But most apartments are empty and seem to be nothing more than an investment for buyers. To lure more residents to the island, an entire area has been declared a duty-free zone. But experts say this is not enough. Forest City needs to attract people who want to live there. When there's no people moving, there's no demand for facility, amenity, no commercial unit or no shopping mall, no retail will move into the city, then the city is incomplete without people. A look at night reveals the problem. To stimulate more economic activity, the Malaysian government announced a plan to create a special financial zone in Forest City. This tower is reserved exclusively for companies, generating jobs that the local population can theoretically profit from. Well, of course it's good for Malaysia, because it attracts investment from other countries like Singapore, China and other Asian countries. It would be a shame if the place has to close down. I come here with the children and it's nice to play here. The real threat to the inhabitants of Forest City is not in the sea. Country Garden is currently among the world's most indebted developers. So far, only 15% of their dream has been realized. Much more investment is needed to keep it alive.